All right, guys, lab number 12. Now we're getting into some interesting stuff. Anything you can do electrically, you can also do with pneumatics as well. You want to make an on-delay timer, you can definitely do that. You just need a few components, similar to what you'd have in a standard electrical timer. The components that I'm going to show you are similar to a resistor and a capacitor. Resist the flow to the capacitor. The capacitor gets to a certain voltage and then send a signal to turn on. Same thing we're going to do here. We're going to have a flow restrictor with a holding tank, and the holding tank is going to act as our capacitor. Okay, let's take a look at the circuit and what we're being asked to do. Use a 3-2 push button and a 5-2 pneumatically operated spring return relay and a double acting cylinder. Okay, so push button controls a 5-2 pneumatically operated relay, and that relay then controls our double acting cylinder. Provide a delay on signal circuit in which you press and hold your 3-2 push button. And then after a five second delay, the 5-2 relay is going to change state. When the 5-2 changes state, the double acting cylinder is going to extend. As soon as you let go of the push button, the double acting cylinder is going to retract immediately. So it's exactly the same as an on delay timer. Press and hold the start circuit. It takes a little bit of time for, before it changes state. As soon as you let go of that signal, it reverts back to its rest state. Okay. If you're Googling this, you will find that They'll come up with this diagram here, very similar to what we're going to do. Uh, but again, we do not have 3-2 pneumatically operated valves. We're going to replace this 3-2 with a 5-2. Okay, let's take a look on the fluid sim. All right, guys, so let's build this up nice and slow. We need to have one of these signals coming in. Let's do the, the rest state as a retract, All right? So here's our main compressed air coming in. And in the rest state being denoted by this spring, air would come up, push this guy back, and then we just need a path for that air to exhaust out. Looks good. We're also gonna provide our 3-2 with some air there. Okay, looks good. I think if I gotta drop this down, otherwise I'm gonna have superimposed lines. We'll see how it works out. Okay, so we have the 3-2, and now the signal going into our 5-2, we're now going to create a timer using two components. We need to have um, a holding tank, and we also need to have a flow restrictor. So let's drop down here. The flow restrictor was right here, the one-way flow control valve. Okay, and let's see if this guy's gonna work. Let's see, put it right here. Looks good, we'll move this bad boy over here. And we will move this guy over a touch. Looks good. All right, so you can see that we have a one-way flow control valve. We have a holding tank, and this portion is going to be in our signal going into our 5-2. Okay, I'm gonna tie in this guy right here into this part of the circuit. There we go. And the way that I'm gonna describe this is that this is our restrictor, and this, or restrictor, this is our resistor, and this is our capacitor. So we're gonna create something similar to an RC circuit in that this resistor is going to limit the flow to our capacitor. Once the capacitor gets to a certain pressure, then the signal is going to travel through to the 5-2. Okay, this is a one-way flow control valve. We can change this to an off-delay by flipping this component around. Remember, this is like a check valve with a flow restrictor component in it. Okay, so let's hit play and see what happens. Excellent. Okay, so we have the air coming up in the rest position. It's in the retracted position right here. And then hitting this push button will allow the air to come up. It will seat this ball. We'll have to go through this flow restrictor. That flow restrictor will determine how fast this charges up. And then remember this is a closed circuit, so any pressure that's in this tank will also be in these lines. That pressure has to build up to a pressure that's greater than the spring. Once it's greater than the spring, the 5-2 will change state, and this will extend. So now we haven't changed the, the flow restrictor whatsoever. So it's wide open right now, and if we hit this push button, change changes state. Okay, so it took one or two seconds there in order for it to change state. If we want it to be a little bit slower, then, and you can see that it looks like we have an, an on delay and an off delay, um, on this guy. So that's the issue with this uh, this simulator is that 
we're trying to show an on delay timer, but by changing this value right here, sometimes the, the simulator isn't gonna work exactly how, like we'd have out in the field. So let's double check. This is open 100%. So let's, let's bring this down to maybe 25%, and we'll see how that affects our circuit. So we're gonna hit this push button, builds up pressure, then eventually when that pressure gets to a value that's greater than the spring, then it changes state right away. Excellent. Now when we let go of this push button in the lab, that double acting cylinder is gonna come right back. Let it go here in the, in the simulator, it takes a little bit of time. So there's no way around that in the, in the simulator, not that I know. If you do know of a way to do this, then put it in the comment section. But again, once we do this timer here, you can see that the air is gonna travel from one to two. It's gonna come up, it's gonna seat this ball. That air will have to go through the flow restrictor that will slowly charge up our holding tank. Then when this guy gets to a pressure then greater than the spring, this will change state and then it will extend. So we can provide that five second delay by changing how much that flow restrictor is cranked down. Once we let this push button go, then you can see that there's a clear path for that air to exhaust. So any air that was trapped inside the cylinder is gonna be able to come down. Then it will go over here. It will have full flow down here and exhaust out of three. So in the simulator, it's working nicely for the extend. Nice delay here. Excellent. When we let this go in the lab, it'll come right back. In the simulator, it's taking a little bit of time for that to come back, but it will come back right away in the lab. All right, guys. So you can write this guy down for your on delay timer. And then what you can do is um, just flip this guy around once you've got the on delay hooked up and you've tested it, flip this component right here around and you'll change it to an off delay. Let's take a look at this in the lab first and then we'll switch it up in the next video. All right guys, lab number 12. This one's gonna provide us with an on delay timer. So what's very cool is that anything electrically you can do, you can do with pneumatics as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a delay in here uh, to delay the time that this changes state. So right now I've got a circuit here where I've got a push button controlling a 5-2 and the 5-2 causes it to extend. Okay. Uh, what I can do is I can move this over to the selector switch and then as soon as I have this go in, then it's gonna change that state, okay? So you can see that it instantly changes state. So what I wanna do is, uh, when I turn the switch here, I want it to provide an on delay, uh, so that we'll have a little bit of time before this will actually cycle out, okay? So what we're gonna make use of is uh, the flow, the one-way flow control valve, okay? So we're gonna make use of one of these guys, and we need a T as well, okay? In addition to that, in the back of these SMC boards, there is another holding tank with a single port that's here. Now, a lot of you guys want to take uh, the output and put the timer in the output. But what we need to do is we need to put the timer in here with our initiating valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tee into this guy. So let's see. We're going to actually put in the, the flow restrictor uh, first. So we're going to go into the flow restrictor and I have no idea whether this is going to work or not but again the beauty of these guys is that we can uh, quickly switch up our outputs so we're going to put a flow restrictor here and we're going to go um, into a T okay so that restricted flow goes into the T and then from the T we're going to go into our initiating port right here on the Two. Okay. The other thing we need to do is we're going to go into our holding tank. So like we were saying earlier in the, in the video, this is kind of like an RC timer where we have uh, the restrictor or the resistor and we've got the capacitor. So the holding tank is going to act as a capacitor. There. We're just going to slow down how fast that tank can build up that pressure. And that same pressure in this closed circuit is also going to uh, this port right here. Okay, so let's see how this guy works. I'm going to crank this down a little bit. I'm not sure whether I put the one-way flow control valve in properly. 
Okay, let's see. So once I flip this switch, then it was moving out instantly. And now we have a delay. So it's slowly building up pressure in this tank here. And then once the pressure is greater than the spring, then it's going to extend. I've got this cranked down all the way. So let me, there we go. So we've, I've opened it up a little bit to change the timing. It instantly goes back to its rest state. Because remember an on-delay timer, as soon as you de-energize it, it goes back to its rest state. Energize it, and we've got a delay here of a couple of seconds, and then it goes out. Very cool. Anything electrically we can do, we can do pneumatically as well. Okay, so on-delay timer works that the signal comes in, takes a little bit of time to change state, change the state after that timing happens, and then once we de-energize the timer, it reverts back right back to its rest state. Excellent. If I wanted to uh, change my timing, then I can just change my flow control valve. We had quite a bit of a, a delay there. Now we just have a slight delay. Okay. By changing that flow restrictor, I can change the amount of time that I have before that signal goes into my valve two. Excellent. All right, guys. When we move back to uh, the next video, all we're going to do is we're going to take this flow restrictor and we're going to flip it and have it go in the opposite direction to provide us with that off -point.